Today, I'm going to be sharing with you guys 23 legendary commanders that free to play players should never invest in what's going on guys cheers so the other day i was live streaming and i got a bunch of questions from the chat and a couple of people were asking me about edward as an investment that's a little bit of foreshadowing there but it made me realize that a lot of new players probably don't know that there's a ton of legendary commanders that you just absolutely should not invest in so today we're going to be talking about those and it might make some of you guys upset and what better way to cover this topic than with a tier maker tier list that's what i do best okay so without further ado let's jump right into it um actually hold on uh, according to my calculations about 80 percent of you guys are actually not subscribed to the channel so if you enjoy today's content make sure you go down there and subscribe and click that thumbs up while you're there now the last thing i want to mention before we do this is sort of how this is uh how this is set up okay obviously the d plus commanders are going to be better investments than the f minus commanders but i want to make no mistake in saying that if a commander shows up anywhere over here if there's any commanders no matter what rank it is here you should not invest in them okay now the first thing we have to get out of the way is the gathering commanders and these commanders go straight to the f minus category okay they just they're not commanders that you should be using universal legendary commander sculptures into not only because you're going to get them for free from the gold keys but also because you're going to get the commander sculpture chests for free by competing in events so long as you're actually participating when they go live and these chests let you pick which one you want so it's actually a really great way to obtain these commanders for free which means they are the worst commanders to use your universal commander sculptures on okay with that out of the way let's start from the bottom up okay and i gotta say th there are more commanders in the f minus category but we're going to talk about them later let's start with d plus and there's actually only one commander in the d plus category and that is richard the first now before you guys go in the comments and scream at me and say that richard is great for chaining barbarians i understand and that's why he's in the d plus category okay I think all players should have a 5111 Richard or a 5511 Richard. After that, I think your sculptures are kind of wasted. Okay. I think they're kind of wasted. If you're a free to play player, you probably should be using those sculptures on someone else like Isong Ye or Alexander the Great or someone else that you can start investing in in the early game. And this is the reason why Richard is the only commander in the D plus category because he is the only commander on the list where a small amount of sculptures invested is good and anything past that is really bad moving on to the d category we're going to talk about yss he's a leadership garrison commander and realistically you're not going to be a garrison captain if you're a free-to-play player or a low spender now there is a, a reason that he's only d and not higher on this list and again higher is worse the reason for that is because you could technically use him to defend your city as a free-to-play player and even as like a you know a 5511 or, or maybe even a little bit more than that 5551 something along those lines he would be decent at defending your city but again should you be using sculptures on a commander just to defend your city no you shouldn't be in fact you should just not take a city rally as a free-to-play player that's the that's sort of the best strategy that you can go with so just don't invest in yss next let's talk about suluan okay suluan is a commander that came into the game uh, much later than the commanders we've talked about so far and you would think that with like power creep and the evolution of the game that he would be decent and like sure you could use him in the open field but a lot of his utility comes from the enemy's current rage status which is something that you can't really always influence to your advantage it might be easier to influence that if you're rallying with Suluan but in the open field it's like you're just going to be hitting random targets and like who knows right so it's just he's not a good investment he's a leadership commander he's got the attack tree like there's a lot of things that go against Suleiman and uh he's a mightiest governor commander so not only does he have all that going against him you have to win a mightiest governor just to unlock him like no shot not a good choice not a good option and he lands in the d tier next we have our boy edward and this was again the inspiration for this video okay and the thing about edward is that you may be confused because in kvk2 he's actually like rally meta like he's actually decent he's got a huge single target damage factor he's giving you archer health right but the problem with edward of woodstock is he has a huge rage requirement he's reducing his own rage he has to be primary he decreases his own defense and he only gets an attack bonus above 70 percent he's just immediately outclassed once you hit kvk3 and beyond and you just you should never invest in him with universals as a free-to-play player in the same vein as that is genghis khan okay genghis khan for a time seems like he's going to be a really powerful commander right he's got uh even as five five one one he's just he's a 
blast cannon he's shooting out a ton of single target damage factor uh he's got the you know the mobility here but the problem with khan is that he instantly is outclassed when you hit season of conquest by zhang yu he's just zhang yu is infinitely better than genghis khan and think about it he's a glass cannon who slows himself down like he can't get away if he's targeted and he he does not want to be targeted he gives you no stats no attack no defense no health no nothing just not good okay horrible investment for free to play players and right now i i gotta say with khan and edward okay these two commanders right here there's a chance that we get a relic buff for these commanders in the future okay at the time of recording this there's rumors of it but there is no confirmation so if in the future we get relic buffs that th that give these commanders huge stat bonuses or something like that then maybe they will fall a little bit lower and you should maybe invest in them or at least they'll be usable um at, at that point but realistically i can't see any relic buff strong enough to make these commanders like meta right unless it's just an insane relic that we haven't seen before so keep that in mind but at the time of recording this these commanders definitely do not invest your universals into it's just not great moving on to the d minus category is charles martel that's right charles martel is a worst universal investment than the commanders we've talked about so far why is that he's a gold key commander okay he's a gold key commander you're gonna get him for free over time is it gonna take a year to get him to five five one one probably okay probably it will take a long time but realistically you'll get that for free okay and before the one year mark anyway uh you're, you're gonna be you're gonna have so few legendary sculptures that you really have to focus them on key aspects like isong a so wasting them on martel is not a good strategy even though he is probably the best gold key commander in the game okay and that's why he's here and not here okay um he is actually the the best investment from the gold key um category but still I just just don't do it okay just don't use universals on charles martel next we're going to talk about zenobia okay zenobia is a uh, queen of garrison however that's all she's good at she's only good at garrison and so as a free-to-play player should you be trying to win a Medius governor or zenobia and if you do like a majority of her skills i think it's like three out of her four skills require that you either be in garrison or hitting a rallied army uh, or at least some part of their skill or of her skills do that so it's like you're just never going to use Zenobia for anything useful and you, you really can't use her in the open field or in Canyon she's just not great okay she's just not great if you're a free-to-play player or a low spender just do not invest in Zenobia it's not a good strategy in the same vein as that is Theodora okay I think Zenobia is probably slightly better than uh, Theodora as an investment um for free-to-play players because if you're gonna garrison it like let's say you're in the 0.1 percent of free-to-play players who have been playing long enough to have an account good enough to defend the flag okay let's say that's the case um you would rather Zenobia than Theodora okay but you know Theodora yeah sure you could use her to defend your city if you wanted to but should you be fighting for a mightiest governor to get Theodora as a free-to-play player no you should not be if you were going to do that if you wanted someone to defend your city you could just get YSS in the in the wheel of fortune and that would be a better choice for you and you can pair him with like Martel or something or or Isong Ye, right those are just better options for defending your city than Theodora as a free-to-play player which is why she's a worse investment um than these commanders down here and finally Yadviga okay this is this whole category is all uh garrison commanders I just realized that uh, Martel is the best investment out of all of them because he's actually usable in the open field um Yadviga is is just not great okay she's sort of like Zenobia but she's not as meta as Zenobia um and she's for cavalry so like cavalry is not usually the type of troop that you garrison uh, an objective with or your own city again same thing mightiest governor commander just don't invest in her as a free-to-play player you're not you're not going to get the value out of it all right next we're going to talk about Mehmed and he is the first F plus tier here okay he is a worse investment than everyone everyone we've talked about so far but he's not as bad as the f and f minus so you'll see what falls in these categories okay Mehmed is uh he, he's good okay he's a good secondary commander in the game right but re remember we're talking about investing universals should you invest universals in Mehmed? no you should not okay you, you really shouldn't five five one one he's great as a secondary but you're gonna get it you're gonna get him there eventually okay and yes with the relic he's even more powerful and the aoe is nice i get i get it okay mimed is good but again we're talking about investments here should you invest universals in him no you, you just shouldn't okay he's a secondary commander at best and he's just you know of the gold key commanders he's probably the second best one 
behind Martel, which is why Martel is uh, lower on the list here. But again, free to play players just get him over time for free and eventually unlock his relic and you'll be good to go don't waste universals in the same vein as that we'll talk about mulan okay is she one of the best gold key commanders absolutely she absolutely is she is doing a ton of stuff that you love with the aoe buffing right but the problem with mulan is that you know from my experience and from my testing in sunset canyon it seems that an expertise joan of arc is as good as a 5511 Mulan or better, right? Because her buff is just much longer than a 5511 Mulan. Now, if you expertise Mulan, I think you can make the argument that she's much better than Joan of Arc, but we're talking about expertise, expertise a gold key commander to provide support, not even damage. It's just support. It's just not a good strategy. You don't want Mulan expertise if you're a free to play player by using universals. Okay just get her over time for free you know is it is it going to be great no it's going to take forever and i've been playing for years and i don't i don't have her expertise from gold keys but you're you're just not it's just not going to be great okay just don't do it mulan is uh she's great but as an investment with universals for free to play no shot next up let's talk about Cao Cao. okay he falls in the same category as the previous two and in fact i think the previous two are better than Cao Cao. but Again, Cao Cao, gold key commander. He's a glass cannon. He doesn't age well. Yes, he has a relic, and you can use him as a secondary commander on like your third cavalry march in season of conquest. Fine, whatever. I understand that. But at the end of the day, as a free to play player, he does not age well, and he's just not a good place to put universals. And uh, trust me, okay, I actually expertised him with universals. So take it from me, okay? Let me take the fall here. I've wasted my sculptures, so you don't have to. Rounding out the F plus tier is a gold key commander. Wow, would you look at that? It's El Cid, okay? And the same thing. He is worse than the previous three we've talked about. He's an archer commander that's in the gold keys, and he's not great. He's just not great that that's all there is to it he's a plain jane vanilla archer legendary and he's good in kvk1 and after that he's just garbage so don't invest universals into him he's just not going to be worth it you can invest them anywhere else even on anyone below him would be better but beyond that like just isong a like they came around the same time isong is infinitely better forever all right moving into the f tier we're going to talk about moctezuma okay moctezuma is not a good commander now if you saw my video talking about the seven worst commanders in the game you might have expected moctezuma to be up here um but he's not okay and the reason that moctezuma is actually only in the f category and not uh, the f plus category uh sorry f minus category is because he actually got a slight buff inadvertently now what, what am i talking about here okay well his third skill gives you a 700 healing factor if he does a normal attack against a target that is a health reduction debuff now great news you guys we just got cpu in the game who provides aoe health reduction three targets and everyone's going to be using cpo which means that you're going to get the healing factor from octazuma way more often now than you ever would have in the past right it's just it's just the facts so just by them putting cpo in the game Moctezuma is slightly better. Does that mean he's a good investment? Hell no. He's still in F category because he's a mightiest governor commander that is primarily for peacekeeping. What the hell is that? I still can't believe Lilith did that so late into the game. They should have thrown him in the gold keys and he still wouldn't be someone people use. But anyway, Moctezuma, not a good investment. Just, just avoid him. Uh, yes, he, he will heal you slightly more than ever before, but he's still not a good commander that you should just, just don't, just don't do in the same vein as that is Wu Zetian okay Wu Zetian is a little bit misleading because in kvk2 it's like oh my god she's actually pretty good at garrison and that's true but that's the only time she's good in garrison like can you use her in season conquest sure but she's outclassed by like every other garrison commander like she just is okay so she shines she's like a flash in the pan she's great for kvk2 and then boom that's it you're done okay you, you don't use her ever again and that's pretty much the reality of Wu Zetian so yeah and again she's only good for garrison so are you going to invest in a garrison commander that is only good in kvk2 like no you're, you're not and like even if you look at edward right sure edward is only good in kvk2 but at least you could use him in the open field if you really wanted to like is it a good strategy no it's not but you could do it you can't use her in the open field you just can't she's just not good enough okay so that's why she is in the f category um not as bad as some of the f minus but definitely an f tier investment all right now we're starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel okay now we're getting there we're gonna talk about ragnar okay ragnar is a trash investment he is trash not only is he a gold key commander but he's worse than all the gold key commanders we've already talked about before 
so he's like the worst of the worst almost okay um he's just he's sort of like a, he's sort of like Julius Caesar but he came into the game pretty late um I think I like him a little bit better than Caesar because I like Ragnar's uh, museum relic um but realistically he's the, the five seconds here is nice but you have to expertise him he, he just he's just not great okay he's not great he's a leadership commander he, the best thing he's got going for him is the beard and he looks like a badass okay that's really what it comes down to and, and like sure I like that about him but as a commander he's not a good investment only 20 percent of stats for a legendary he's immediately outclassed in kvk2 and later he's yeah sure he's okay in kvk1 but as an investment with universals he's one of the worst ones you can make and did i mention caesar okay caesar is going to round out the f tier investments and again julius caesar okay julius caesar he's so similar to ragnar it's like if you really break it down on paper they're so similar when they're expertise that it, it doesn't even make a difference especially when they have the relics he's he's just not he, he doesn't provide a stable source of stats yes this is five second buff sure but that the, the uptime depends on how often you can get the rage and, and you know he's just he's just not good okay he's just not a good place for universal legendary commander sculptures can you use him in the open field sure can you use him in canyon sure but again we're talking about universal investment he's one of the worst and with that being said let's move on to the final commanders that are going in the f minus category freddy man I, ha I hate to do it to you freddy i hate to do it but i gotta do it okay frederick goes in the f minus category because he is uh he's just like ragnar and caesar except i just think he's a little bit worse I just think he he does like not like he just doesn't do anything man he just doesn't do anything okay yes he provides a ton of single target damage factor but besides that he's gonna heal you so great news your hospital's gonna fill really fast and then the other two aren't aren't great at all now yeah you bring more troops to the battlefield whoop de do okay great great good for you but here until he's expertise this doesn't even guarantee damage it's 80 percent chance but sometimes it just won't do it okay so until he's expertise there's a chance that you're gonna miss out on some of what his active skill does just based on rng like what the hell is that that is complete duty okay it's complete doo-doo he's horrible you can use him in kvk1 and again just like ragnar and caesar you can use him in the open field and in canyon he's not good but you could do it uh but as a universal investment he is one of the absolute worst ones you could pick and he goes in f minus right alongside lubu okay right alongside lu boo okay the thing about lubu as an investment he deals aoe defense reduction and that is pretty much it okay if you're gonna use universals on lubu then i don't know what you're thinking but it's just not a good strategy okay he's not a good commander and in fact I don't think you're ever going to be able to get him if you're a new player okay if you're a new player in the game this promotion where you got lubu is over so I, unless they renegotiate something with dynasty warriors nine i just i don't think we're ever going to see him so you don't even really have to worry about that no you bore me lubu okay you bore me with with your skills here okay it's trash this one is only when you're rallying cities not even flags like there's just so much to hate about lubu and on top of that he doesn't even get a relic he doesn't even get a relic like the others here do okay at least freddy got a relic lubu doesn't at least ragnar and caesar get relics lubu doesn't so he's pretty much on the same category or on the same level as them without that little extra buff that he so desperately needs and even worse investment than that is charlemagne and you guys probably saw this coming okay but charlemagne is just so bad and his relic gives him what 300 extra damage factor even with the 30 percent attack man he's just so bad like he gets a skill damage bonus that's worse than isong Ye's, but he only gets it if he loses 30 percent of his troops like what on earth it's it's a worse buff for a huge cost like there's just no reason to invest in Charlemagne he is probably the worst place that you can put your universal legendary commander sculptures even if you put your universals in like Sunduk for example right and of course you can get her for free you can expertise her for free over time with gold keys and those commander choice chests but if you put universals into her before you do that then at least you get her expertise sooner which means you get the 10 percent load faster which is probably more useful than an expertise Charlemagne. okay so just don't do it guys if you see a commander on this list right here anywhere on this list it is not a commander that you should be investing your universal legendary commander sculptures into but the higher on the list the worse of a decision you've made i guess now i guess the last thing i'll mention is barca and this whole video we've talked about free-to-play investments with sculptures so obviously if you have barca you're not free to play and 
you can't invest sculptures but just from like a stars and experience perspective don't invest in Barco. just just don't. okay with all that being said guys if you enjoyed the video drop a thumbs up on it it helps this video go out into the youtube algorithm comment down below what you think your worst investment has been in rise of kingdoms and if you're new here subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i'll talk to you guys again soon peace